The first treatment was incredible. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I was running around happy, and I thought, wow, this is what normal feels like. I don't think I've experienced anything like this. Uh, I used to be an emergency room physician, uh, but when I encountered this technology, I found it to be so important that I left traditional medicine, and this is all I do, and this is all I've been doing for the last nine years. So in that time, I've seen well over a thousand patients, and uh, I find this a remarkable technology that it treats a variety of things that are extremely common and prevalent for which there is no good treatment. Among those include anxiety, and anxiety in any of its form, whether it's panic attacks, chronic anxiety, even post-traumatic stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, the nervous system. Right away, in the first session, we usually begin to see changes, and right away, we see the nervous system become less reactive. Instead of being in constant fight or flight mode, it starts to settle down into stable, what we call homeostatic mode. It's very good for depression. Mood elevates, people become social and stop isolating. They begin to enjoy life again. And again, we begin to see initial results very early. Average number of uh, sessions for most things is about 15 to 20. It's also very effective for ADD, ADHD attention deficit disorder. Children and adults become more focused, less distracted, uh, more organized, they work more efficiently. Actually, their friends start to like them more because they're able to pay attention to their friends instead of being co -co so caught up in their own distractions. It's remarkably, most remarkably to me, is that it's very effective for traumatic brain injury, for a concussion. And there is nothing in the world that treats concussions at all, yet, Starting again, remarkably, in the first session, people begin to see a reduction in symptoms with concussion, whether it's headache, or nausea, or blurry vision, or um, anxiety, and anger. These and more, hypersensitivity to sound and to light, these and more symptoms are associated with uh, chronic or post-concussion syndrome. In fact, we did a study with 10 former NFL players. Uh, all They averaged about seven years in the NFL all with post-concussive syndrome, and all 10 players improved significantly. Uh, my name is Jesse Sapolu. Uh, played for the San Francisco 49ers from 1983 to 1998, so about 15 years. Uh, played offensive line, uh, offensive guard and center. Uh, was a pro bowler at both positions. Uh, was able to be lucky enough to win four Super Bowls. With the data that I'm aware of now and, and, and the understanding that we have now, I, I, I did have, you know, concussions. Uh, you know, back then, it's how fast you can identify two fingers, you know, compared to four fingers. And even as far back as uh, high school, I, I got stunned a couple of times. Uh, I find myself uh, getting to the point of being on the edge, uh, of being angry and, and you know, I played this game, I, I, I love the game, but maybe I'm starting to pay the price for it now. And uh, that worries you. Uh, but coming to this treatment has given me uh, uh, some of that confidence back. Some of our players are bringing their kids. So you don't do that unless you truly have a belief that it's making a difference. Okay, I'm Kermit Alexander, and I'm a 14-year NFL veteran player. This is my lovely wife, Tammy, who is helping me raise five children that we adopted that are from Haiti. I was a defensive back, uh, both safety and cornerback, and I was also a kick return specialist. Kermit was hit so hard one time, he didn't wake up until Tuesday when they were going over the game films. He was hit in a game so hard that it knocked him out, and cognitively, he wasn't even there until two days later. He woke up during the film and said, oh, when do we go back in the game? Well, the, the thing that I noticed was I view it as clarity. I'd wake up in the morning and things were clear. Well, for a long time, I was not very clear. Up until recently, I wasn't very clear. I'd wake up and I'd kind of stumble around and I'd, I'd, it'd take me two or three hours to get together. Now I'm getting closer to, to where I felt normal, where I'd wake up and I'd be clear. Starting to get some of it back with the treatment I've been getting, so that's encouraging, but I'm not back to where I was uh, when I think considered myself normal. I'm 50% better. Uh, I was at one point probably 4 or 5%. Now I'm about 50%. When I became aware was probably about 24 months ago where I actually 
started realizing that there was a significant problem or something was amiss. Later on, it started getting to, I don't know what child I have in the car. I don't know who I dropped off at school. I don't know what their their bell schedule is. And that started sending up some, some red flags to where I actually reached out and asked his family to confer with me, does anybody have this in the family? And there isn't. So I was ruling out hereditary dementia and knowing that you know he played actually 14 years but a player actually plays more like 30 years. Situations was he could not find his way home uh, when he was driving. He Places that he'd been to all of his life. Since starting treatment he has not had any type of, of disorientation. That is one area I've seen a, a significant improvement. Before HPN I was angry with myself because I didn't remember the way I used to remember. I took issue with that and it, and it was a constant irritation. Now I have a what is happening and I understand that there's a possibility of curing it or at least lessening it so it gives me an opportunity to relax and just enjoy what I have. I'm closer to normal than I was 10 years ago. So my name is Scott Pallara and I'm the founder and CEO of The Power of Choice where we specialize in concierge addiction services in Malibu, California. Um, typically with addiction you'll see a lot of anxiety and depression um, with an underlying addiction issue. Depression, anxiety, um, the impulse and compulsion issues that they often experience um, tend to dissipate substantially after uh, about 12 to 15 sessions and I've experienced this treatment myself personally. Um, I've found that I become less reactive to outside environment and stimulus um, in a positive way. I feel more centered, um, overall greater sense of well-being. I'm Rachel Smith, HPN High Performance Neurofeedback Clinician. These are demonstrations of HPN with my client, Corey, who has been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Here he is stuck in fight or flight mode, which is run by the instinctual part of the brain. The rational part of his brain is unavailable to him. He's so shut down that he's unable to socialize or make eye contact. HPN can often reach the entire brain in seconds and unlatch a state of fight or flight. HPN results are often quicker and last longer than traditional neurofeedback. It's faster, easier to administer, and portable, and the client doesn't do or feel anything. The neurofeedback is showing his brain what it's doing. It's like holding up a mirror to a dancer. The FDA approved hardware is monitoring his brain waves and sending a very, very tiny signal back to his brain. It's about 300 times less than a cell phone puts out. All he feels is relaxation once his brain registers the feedback. What he actually experiences is a similar brain wave pattern as people who meditate for many years, a very healthy state most brains can't easily reach. Watch Corey's relief from this dark place in response to improved neuronal function. Fifty thousand to two hundred thousand people have been treated. There is probably about uh, eight hundred practitioners in the world at this point, and as far as we know, there is not a single published report of someone having been worse off from having done it. So it's extremely safe. This isn't a, a new technology or an experimental technology. It's been around for a long time. It's just not a well-known technology, at least not yet. 